So Andrew, we're in mid-December now, 2022. Um, we're probably 12 months on from when we started Herd Builders. Uh, it's a service, I suppose, you're spearheading for us in Grass Tech. If you can give people a background to your farm here in Kilimanjaro and Cork, and also maybe a bit of an overview of Herd Builders. Yeah, um, so uh, I suppose, look, uh, I was approached to see what I do. I suppose improve the, the genetics in, in a lot of herds there that they haven't, I suppose over the, the years, they haven't seen significant improvement and uh, I suppose followed the EBI but didn't see enough uh, in it. And look, they were unhappy with maybe their cages of milk solids and their percentages there and wondering why. And I suppose, look, I'd be passionate about breeding and I suppose uh, I take very careful selection there in our own herd there. So I'd be picking, um, you know, I'd be selecting, you know, specific bulls for specific cows. Now it takes a bit of work and a bit of time. And I know sour advice uh, can do it as well. But look, I think um, everybody uh, that knows their own herd there, you know, um, are looking for these, these really good improvements there in percentages of fat and protein. And when you look at EBI um, and maybe pick the high EBI bulls, you know, sometimes they are, they actually don't work on, on farms with, for argument's sake, they're trying to um, maybe improve their percentages of fat and protein and by doing that, uh, improve their milk price. Right. And maybe just again to start on your farm here, say, how many are you milking? What kind of production are you doing, say? So we're milking about 130. Um, we're doing about close to 600 kgs of milk solids. Um, and I suppose our average, I suppose for this year now, we'll probably average maybe 4.9 fat and probably 3.93 or 4 protein. Uh, the goal is to hit the magic 9% solids, which would mean 5% fat and 4% protein. And if anything, probably reduce production to, because of the, the, the implementations of the new carbon footprint um, and maybe drive our... our, our, our production through percentages rather than through volume because volume is going to cost us a few quid down the line and look through carb, the carbon footprint there now and everything that's implemented in the new EBI you know look is uh, volume isn't favoring it anyway you know okay. so so I suppose like it's fantastic production and that's a combination of genetics and grassland management yeah yeah de definitely look um, you know it's it's 60 percent genetics and 40 percent management that's what they tell us but management has a huge part, huge part to play with it you know, and, and look, we get out our cows. We come from a difficult uh, uh, farming uh, uh, land here. Like, you know, it's not easy to, we he heavy ground here um, and, you know, fragmented farm. But uh, look, we, we try to get our cows out early and grass. And look, it's no point having all this the good genetics there, you know, I I if you don't, um, you know, get them out early there, keep the grass in the diet for as long as possible there. Um, so look, uh, management is a huge part to play, you know. Yeah. So you've obviously a passion for genetics. Yeah. You yeah. always had? Uh, yeah, the brother is bee farmer and look, he, he loves the bee side of genetics mm. and he's passionate about that. So it's, it must be obviously some, it must be genetic ourselves, yeah. you know, that, that he's in the bee side of things and he's excellent at it. And look, come here, we're on the dairy side of things. Uh, we're not happy where we are and we want to progress all the time. Yeah. And look, I, I love to see farmers you know, progressing in relation to their own genetics there. That's my passion is to get fellas there to improve there all the time, like, and, and yeah. see where they are and see where they, where they, where they can go, like, yeah. you know. And I suppose that's where we possibly would have seen your, your passion for genetics. And um, we were getting inquiries, I suppose, from people to our livestock services in terms of maybe wanting to improve their, their, I suppose, their breeding policy and their overall merit of their herd. And I suppose that's where... I suppose we decided to join forces yeah, to yeah, set up yeah. herd builders. Exactly, yeah. So, and I suppose, as we were saying, 12 months in, you have done a few projects. Um, and maybe for people, what role is it or what, what's the reality of that service for people when you go on to farm? Yeah, look, you know, I, I loved what I, what, what, what I did. We've done, you know, a handful of farmers there. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, the farmers came to us for a reason. So, like, they were looking for, that's the beauty about, you know, when they get on to us. They know they're in trouble. They're not happy with the progression of the EBI. Maybe the waiting that they were going for maybe wasn't implemented. Maybe they didn't take enough care of attention to the specific traits in the EBI. And look, we come in and analyze the herd from top to bottom, each individual animal there. 
and we pick out, you know, what's their objective, you know, and where have they gone wrong, and we implement uh, a breeding program there to, so they can reach their targets. So where have people maybe gone wrong, in your opinion, or where, why have they rang you in the first place? Um, look, I suppose, um, look, DBI is a great model, you know, and don't get me wrong, it's perfect, but, you know, some, like, some people put more weighting on one than the other, uh, and they might lose focus on one, so look, uh, you can have a really high BI animal there, but uh, you know if the weighting in in in, in production, uh, you know, isn't correct, meaning that if there's poor percentages in that uh, that bull, and then you're putting that bull into a herd of cows that has poor percentages, but the EBI is high because the weighting might be, say, for argument's sake, super on fertility, and I look fertility is very important. You know, it, it's 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 weighted highly for fertility, which might be already good in their herd, but they need to focus on the specific traits within the EBI. Like the EBI is made up of eight traits, now it was seven and carbon is there. So like, you know, these, those eight traits are there for a reason, you know, and it's to pick the weakest point in their EBI or their genetics in their herd and uh, put something strong, you know, uh, some the strength into, the, into, the, into their own um, EBI there regarding production percentages you know, whatever the case may be, fertility or whatever. Like. Is, it, is it fair to say, Andrew, that you're looking at two aspects of it? One is on the, the actual bulls that they'll use when it comes to the breeding season, and the other side is looking at the herd, the, the dam side of it, in yeah. terms of, you know, identifying the cows maybe that they should be breeding from, who are genetically the best in the herd, and equally identifying cows which they probably shouldn't be breeding from. Is that part of the... Of the oh, herd? yeah, look, I, yeah. Uh, I suppose, look, we, we analysed the, the younger stock, uh, the bulling heifers, all the cows, and like the biggest problem is there is that you could come into her there and like 60% of the cows mightn't fit your right criteria in relation to genetic gain is that the genetics could be so poor and you, you, you just have to work with the 40% that's left. Now it's, it's, not, it's, it's not ideal that there's only that many left there but in, in some cases there you'd be advising the farmer to actually buy superior genetics, buy better genetics because the problem is that it'll take too long for them to climb up the ladder to having superior genetics. Yeah. So in some cases there, look, it's all about producing their own stock and, their own, and, and bettering their genetics there by picking the best cows in the herd and the best bulls that are on the active bull list. But the problem is in, in some cases there, and these are the, farm, the, her, the farmers that are coming to us looking for advice, is that they just don't have enough of those animals in their own herd. And, you know, maybe to buy outside stock or buy better genetics there, in some cases, would be advisable. Okay. Okay. And so, so again, we're here, we're here on your farm in December, and maybe it's a good, it's a good opportunity to look back and see what you've done with a few of the client farms that took 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 the service in 2022, um, and then project forward in terms of. So you you would affected their breeding decisions or give advice on their breeding decisions last May, June, or so in the breeding season. And so we can look back on that, but equally look forward as to what their progeny are likely to turn out like once they're born next spring and once they go into the milking herd scent. Yeah. Right yeah, and look, I suppose, look, yeah, and probably this is the, this is just an example of one herd here now. Um, and, you know, his existing PTAs for, for the herd is, you know, 0 0.09 fat and 0 0.08 protein. Um, and look, we, you could talk about the kgs of solids as well for fat and protein, but I suppose you know, we selected the best um, dams in, in his herd, uh, uh, young stock, uh, including maiden heifers and, and, and cows, and through careful selection, bull selection and dam selection there, you know, we, that was the, the differences are, were just unbelievable, like, uh, um, for his 2023 barn calves. So we can see here that his existing fat and protein in his herd you know, is 428, and the potential of the calves, that's uh, fat, and the potential of the calves to calve down, the potential for them, the genetic potential, is 5% fat. <coughs> and yep. his protein is 367, herd average, but the potential for the calves in 2023 is 4.05. Now, that's over 9% solids, you know, that he's doing. And it's mind-blowing to see how good selection and good genetics there are after taking him from where he was to where he is now. And the milk value in that 
is probably worth about 10 cent a litre in current market. And for argument's sake there, if he has a, a million litres, say he's milking 180 cows, you know, the potential gain would, you know, not producing any extra milk would be about 100,000 euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, these are not, these are figures, you know, they're not, they're not made up, they're actual figures. And, you know, look, we know that this, through, through the, the genetics there, that these animals are going to do this on the ground, you know, with good management, and management is very important. So look, uh, the farmer was hugely impressed when he saw this. Yeah, and so, again, just to reiterate, so this is the existing herd uh, fat and protein percentages. That's correct. And this is, this is what is predicted to be the fat and protein percentages of the calves that will be born next spring yes. when they're milking in the herd. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, so yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. And this could even improve, say, for argument's sake, I know this, uh, this individual there used a lot of uh, sex semen, and uh, he did a lot of AI. So, like, actually, this could even be, this could even be better because what he could do is he could actually, if he surplus her for calves, mm -hmm. he could actually sell the, the, the poor ones, for argument's sake, and actually, this could actually be increased yes. because if he had surplus her for calves. So, and look, he did all this, you know, his milk was 76. He actually improved everything. His kgs of fat and his kgs of protein with actually less milk. So he, he was positive in milk here. Now, through the, the genetics, he's actually negative in milk, minus 41, but he's after increasing his fat kgs, his protein kgs, and his percentages. Yeah. So like, he's actually future-proofing himself because we know there's, the banding system is coming in and the carbon footprint, is, you know, you, the more milk you have, the higher carbon footprint you're going to have, you're going to create. So, you know, like... And you have A plus B minus C. Minus C. Minus C is less... Less processing costs. Less processing yeah. costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. So... That's exactly it, yeah. Okay, okay. So for a farmer, Andrew, who, who, who's availing of this service, what information do you need from him? <laughs> or, or, you know? Yeah, I suppose, look, it's obviously a huge help if he's milk recording. Um, and the more information that the farmer is doing, the, you know, it's going, the more, I suppose, the easier and the better for him. The more information we can get, the better the service he'd be able to get. Like, so yeah. if we get a lot of information, milk recording, if he's on ICBF, a Health Plus member, obviously, um, and look, there's be the other records as well there that might be needed. You know, the more data we get, the better service he'll get and the better information he'll get. And like, it's just not genetics there. Look, we, we looked at a lot of things there. It, it takes its own. We look at um, fertility side of things there, um, conception rates, non-return rates for, for, for bulls. Uh, we looked at six-week calving rates, submission rates. We look at actually even roadways, um, the infrastructure on the farm, uh, paddock sizes. So you know, like it, it's it it's just uh, it could, it's amazing. You know what the, the service you get there it isn't just based on genetics. It's based on, I suppose, the advice I've been got through Chagas and uh, uh, the great discussion group I'm in as well. Like so. There's a, a lot involved in it, like yeah. it's, it, there's a, an amount of information um, that you can get out of it. Like. Right, okay. And you mentioned before, maybe above farmers, maybe not spreading their net in terms of maybe AI companies or whatever, that not to limit yourself maybe to one AI company because there might be different bulls with different characteristics. Would that be fair yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I think, you know, like back, I'm, I'm always saying this, you know, to the bull picks the AI company, like so. Um, it, it, I know some farmers would prefer to have you know, uh, be stuck with a company there, but like, if they want to improve their genetics there, you know, th th that semen from another company can be delivered into their, that company, you know, so whatever the company it may be, but look, it's, it's really important there for the bull to pick the company, you know, and use the best genetics, like, because, yeah. like, genetics is permanent, and, you know, it's, 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 it has a knock-on effect, you know, and like, like, like the carbon footprint going forward, you know, and feed additives and everything like that. You know, they're all extra things you have to put in. But if you breed the, the right cow and the right genetics, you know, that'll reduce your carbon footprint. And you can actually keep farming the same way you are. You don't have to change anything. Uh, and you can have lower carbon footprint by using the right genetics. And I suppose regardless of breed type as well, if a, if a farmer has a preference for particular breeds, the solutions there within all the breeds. Breed oh, there types. is, yeah, and look, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, uh, definitely, uh, but, uh, I think the sex semen, 
you know, is, 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 is evolving there and there's a lot of people using that. Um, and look, you know, nobody wants these unwanted uh, male calves. Uh, so look, that technology there is, yeah. is, is there now. So yeah, look, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, there's, there's good choices out there now. So we're, we're not limited as much as we were before, like, so. Okay. Very good. And I suppose, look, just to finish for 2023, we're taking bookings for, for the service. Yeah, and yeah, really yeah. What we've done for exactly. 2022. I, I think, you know, this is an ideal time of the year. You know, things are quiet. And I think the whole industry there in relation to the breeding carbon footprint, you know, uh, the, 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 the dairy beef index there, you know, the commercial beef value and all this, you know, everything is after changing there in, in a matter of 12 months. You know, the, the banding and all that you know the milk processing costs there are, are, are so you know you can't keep doing the same thing you know all the time you know you have to change um you have to change your breeding you have to change t you know to keep uh, ahead of things there so very good yeah okay that's great thanks for your time thank you